Hello everyone. Uh, this is a new setup this time. Like this is something we are trying for the first time. Uh, welcome. This is another product webinar we are doing uh, on form analysis this time. I have Ashwin with me. Ashwin, say hi, hi to everybody. Hi everyone. Yeah. So in this session, we are discussing ways to optimize the last mile of your conversion, which is forms mostly. And <coughs> just just before we kick start the session, let me just have a few housekeeping announcements to make. You can ask your question on the go to webinar question widget or you can ask your questions on Twitter. We'll be responding to them at the end of the session. This session is being recorded, so you don't have to worry about making notes or you know, script just scribble around your notebook and like take out whatever points you want to have. Just uh, just to be uh, in, in the entire session, be attentive because we'll be taking the QA in the end and we're expecting a lot of questions from this side, from your side. Okay, so let's begin. Why we are here today. I think we'll be covering three things. First is to what are the motivation behind anybody filling out a form for your website, B2B, B2C, whatever it takes. Then we'll have a couple of industry examples to take uh, where we'll try to uncover the entire story of uh, why anybody goes into filling out a form, what are the you know cognitive biases there, what are the fiction points and, and all, all sort of things. And in the end, we'll be discussing about ways in which you can build testing ideas to test your form and improve your conversion rates. Exactly. So first things first, uh, the reason we are doing this webinar is uh, we read across this uh, study from Upsword, uh, which talked about that 50% of the marketers, they still find lead gener they, they still find forms as their highest lead generation channel. Now we sit in an era where you know there are companies like Drift, there are companies like the Intercom. Who, who have like built this buzz around conversational marketing and a lot of businesses are resorting towards you know generating uh, leads in a, in a in a much interactive way or like or you can say like it's the modern way of selling these days still you know like 50 percent of the market and if i you know interpret in a better way like these 50 percent are working for b2b and b2c companies right. so like a good 50 percent of businesses are actually resorting to forms uh, which, which is a traditional way of generating leads uh, and it still has the highest way of doing it. And if I talk about why form analysis at this point in time, another point which came out of that study with generated by HubSpot was that businesses who do testing, they see a lot of value with with the forms. And the, and in, if in comparison to businesses who don't do testing, there's a 10% increase uh, in conversion rate for businesses who do testing and they who, who test on their forms. Any other point you you think you might have is so interesting. I think, so yeah, I think the previous slide is very interesting. Uh, so I'll actually go back to it and uh, we can discuss a bit about it. Why forms are important. And I think uh, you know when we are thinking about you know A/B testing strategy and we interact with a lot of clients on a daily basis and there's a lot of buzz around doing you know very wacky experiments, uh, you know with dynamic content, a lot of personalization. And form is such a simple thing. You're asking, you know, three or four questions or five questions to your users uh, who are excited to receive some sort of value from you. Uh, and it's it, form is almost like, you know, asking a lot of personal questions. What, what, you know, in our case, what is your name? What company you're working for? Your you know, what is your designation? Uh, you know, so these are personal questions. So what form does, and I think it's very important to look at forms in a correct way you're building it's it's actually a token of trust yep. that a customer puts into you and when you look at it from that perspective you know forms play a very pivotal role in any kind of value transaction that happens between your business and your clients and getting that experience right becomes pivotal for the business and that's why you know forms could be in any form as you said yep. you know uh, chatbots and anything but and it's a great thing you mentioned about the experience because yeah. i think we have worked very closely, like you know, the product and the marketing team in terms of optimizing our own uh, free trial forms. Yes. And I mean, those who, who are attending the session and does not know, uh, <coughs> we recently uh, revamped our entire flow of how you request a free trial with VW. Like initially, uh, if, you, if you see like some time back, like maybe four, five months back, <coughs> we made this change. And you yeah. had to fill out a, a like a five, six field form where you, you send in your email addresses, you give you, you put in the password for, for the account, you give us details like your industry, your designation, your phone number, your traffic on your site and all, all sort of things. And right. what we have done now is 
you only give us your email address and your name. Yes. And there was actually a lot of buzz around the company in terms of whether this is the right way or not. And we did think a lot of uh, about it. And I think it would be a heavy way to discuss all of that idea in this. But I think what stand out for me in this this entire process of you know changing or revamping the flow of anybody signing up to VW is that the moment you give us your email address and you're in, you feel like a user. Yes. What do you think? Yes, I think that's very important, especially, and I think it's contextual to our business uh, because, you know, we have a lot of people are coming in through content and, you know, they get excited about A-B testing and they really want to get into the tool itself. Uh, and if we ask them so many questions, again, that token of trust is, you know, too quick. We need to provide them some yeah. sort of value. And as you said, if we make them feel like a user and, you know, that's, I think, also relevant to a lot of B2B businesses, you you need to make give them some sort of value. And in our case, you know, making them feel like a user and making them feel like they can just jumpstart within the tool and start their first A-B test. You know, getting that experience yeah. right is important. Yeah. Another thing which I remember was, you know, uh, when we decided to break down our uh, sign up process into steps was reducing the redundant queues. And when I say redundant yes. is our fields, which can be enriched from other tools. Yes. So because when we're asking <coughs> for more personal details for, for information from other people, it's a responsibility to reduce that cognitive bias so that, you know, that there is a healthy way of exchanging value. Yes. So I think, uh, I think we are talking a lot about the word value. So I think let's unpack that a bit in our case. So, we are asking for, you know, their domain, their email ID with their domain. So we can, you know, we can figure out a lot of information through that. A lot of publicly available information about, you know, the uh, how big the company is, what is the revenue Where like, they're located. Uh, if they are funding or not, and stuff like that. We don't need to ask that from the user. What we need to ask them is, and this is especially true for B2B businesses, is what value are they looking to get out of the tool? Uh, and that's something that we are also trying to do. A lot of B2B businesses are trying to do understand why they hired the tool uh, within their the business job, yeah. yeah and what is that job and what needs to be done and talking about that is more critical than asking for information that is already out there so there's a trade-off obviously uh, because that means you're also investing in a lot of tools that would do that so again depends on business to business but if you have the money uh, and you can take away some sort of friction away from the flow and automate it that's actually not a bad way to uh, get uh, the user started on the it's right. It's great manner. you mentioned that point because I think what I was about to come on on was uh, like not a lot of businesses can afford or you know invest in such kind of tools yes. uh, where you know you, you can get enrichment in place. You can like back reverse IP <clears throat> and you know a lot of things like that. So what you would recommend to those customers? So I think there are two ways. Uh, so one way is obviously you know like asking for the most relevant information right at the gate. So that means, you know, you'll, the top of the funnel would have less leads, but you'll, you'll have high quality leads uh, that are coming in that actually fit uh, into the criteria of your ideal customer. The second thing you could do is have a very uh, effective lead scoring mechanism. Um, and you could, you know, use certain fields that are important. For example, uh, if Alexa rank is important or uh, company size is important or, this te or the territory is important, you figure out the correlations beforehand and then just ask for that information that you feel is highly, highly critical uh, to get your lead scoring right uh, and use that. So again, understanding those trade-offs about where you stand with technology, what parts you can automate, what is critical for you. You could do that even as a startup and even as you know a, a company with 2,000, 3,000 customers. This specifically I'm talking about B2B space right now. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, to get the process started, I think it's very important to see uh, how your entire journey has been, what is the value you are offering. And at the time when, when a user is signing up, that user should be reminded of the value yes. which you're offering. Like, and I think uh, a lot of uh, businesses do that mistake when, when they are trying to convert <coughs> their, uh, their, their money pages. And when I say money pages, that whenever they invest a lot of money in, in the search ads and all that, like say, hey, there's a $50 discount or something like that and when a some when a user is trying to sign up for that uh, value right that that value is missing at the time so the person or the user get confused in terms of hey i was promised some value and i mean 
will I still going to get it or is, is there something more we need to do or something like that so it's very important to mention that right right at the time of uh, when you you're asking somebody to sign up for for your product for your for your services for for, for an offer uh, and adding to that you also need to know what motivates them uh, so if for example if, you know I I I really love headphones um, and you know I'm an audiophile so if I'm going into buying a piece of you know beautiful headset uh, and then at the beginning itself I'm asked a lot of questions about you know the kind of head headgear I have or my preferences and stuff like that it just takes away you know that experience of why is someone asking me so many questions but if uh, an experience is built around me exploring the headphones and then at the right time you know giving me that experience around maybe you know a review or something that just gives me that wow factor and excites me about or motivates me about you know grabbing those headphones as quickly as possible yeah. it's very easy to yeah. get you know it's yeah. very easy to uh, get my credit card details but if someone asks my credit card details before i'm sure about a particular set of headphones it gets a bit tricky because yeah. you, you your rational mind kicks in and you're always asking the difficult questions should i share my credit card details is this important for me uh, right now do i even have the money yeah and stuff like that so i think motivating them to realize that value as quickly as possible is also key uh, in getting uh, or creating a right form experience uh, for your customers and understanding the value and what motivates them to achieve that value is also uh, pretty critical uh, from that perspective yeah i think a lot needs to be invested in the story yes and forms is just still the last mile where that story needs to be summarized yes at that moment so I think uh, we have talked a lot about in terms of how your journey and the story should look like. What are right. the importance of uh, using <clears throat> forms analysis and you know improving improving your form in the first place? I think let's deep dive into how th you yep. how you know businesses can get started using VW and, and other tools in terms of improving <coughs> the form. Right. Quick overview. So uh, the thing is, I think a lot of businesses start looking at forms. Uh, at the wrong note mm. uh, and what they try to do is you know run a campaign on forms itself so the actual fields that is obviously important to figure out you know, pretty where... much what all tools have to offer yes. in the first place so yes they... but it's, it's a bit counterintuitive because you know form is part of the customer journey mm. and as i said you know it's a transactional uh, point in the customer journey where you're exchanging uh, some sort of information in exchange or in anticipation of value so at that point of time it's important to um, to make sure that the um, th that you know the experience of the form and uh, the value is you know given across in the right manner so how do you do that so you know in our tool what you can do is you can obviously go into forms and look at the fields and figure out you know on what field the user is getting stuck i think that's the easy way of doing it uh, because we'll say you know obviously there'll be some fields for example if you have asked for a first name and last name we'll discuss that in a case study that you know maybe the user is getting confused exactly, fix that. yeah but if you want to go for bigger wins you really need to get into the visitor research aspect of forms and look at that form page as an experience and how the experience how the value is being given at that touch point in the customer journey and that could only happen if you actually uh, do vis uh, visitor research on the form page itself or even a couple of touch points before that how someone gets to that form so getting that right from a heat plan visitor recording visitor research standpoint i think is important and we can deep dive into that uh, using a couple of examples yeah and also i think uh, this, there's a very interesting way of doing that in vw yeah like you can build a goal in terms of whether a user is filling out a form field or not yes and put a measure of that those uh, folks who are visiting that page are not converting the goal. Yes. So if you do that, first of all, you get to filter <clears> out <throat> everybody who are not filling out the form and are getting stuck on A, B, C, X, Y, Z fields. Yes. And that helps you see exactly like what are the challenges they are facing in action. Yes. Like that, that's brilliant. So I think in visitor, so when you're looking at a visitor recording, you're actually able to visualize, you know, what kind of, what pieces of information someone spent time on, what were what was the pieces of information that they were looking for uh did they hesitate on the form or not uh did they 
look around? Did they try to click a couple of links? And all of that can only happen if you actually deep dive into the experience itself. So creating those views, as you said, you know, it's very easy, uh, three goals. So one is if they completed the form fields or not, that could be one goal in VW. One is obviously, uh, you know, successful completion of the yeah, form itself. Exactly. And the third is someone visiting the form page. And with these three goals, what you can say, someone who's converted and not converted. So someone who converted for filling out a form, but did not convert for uh, actually uh, finishing the, finishing the, uh, finishing form. the form yeah. itself. And that is a gold mine that's exactly. already there in your VW dashboards and a great starting point. That just uh, reminds me to out. share this particular example with you. Yeah. So we have a customer like Iguama, uh, which is an e-commerce e <clears throat> store. The problem which they were facing and they tried to solve it exactly the way you narrated the story that they saw that they have a form and it has so many fields. They have name and first name segregated. And the reason I think I tell you that the reason why most businesses have name and first name segregated is because of their database guy. <laughs> he wants data sanity in, across the board and he would like to go to length to make you con uh, convince that you know, would you need to have the name and yes. the, uh, last name field separate. But that's actually a marketing challenge. Right. Because a lot of people, uh, they just do this. What they do is just fill out the full name in the name field and they just skip the last name field. So it's very important to, you know. So, so, so Utkash, what is interesting is like if you did not write the explanation of the screenshot, uh, I would have really asked the audience figure out what's happening on the screen. Yeah. And I think, again, the story point, it's not clear. You know, what is the brand? What is the experience? Where is the user in that experience? what is the value they're getting out of it none of these things are clear and instead what we are looking at is friction friction is from a user standpoint we are expecting something out of the user what are we expecting the first name last name email um and it's spanish it's spanish okay and maybe a pass i am hoping it's a phone password it's a phone number yeah and and you know maybe they can even log in through facebook but no mention of the value anywhere um and no mention of a story at yeah. all. So those are, you know, some alarming signs. If I just looked at that page without looking at the description. At yeah. All. So actually, Iguama was, uh, you know, very quick in terms of understanding <clears throat> why their forms were not converting, and then deep dive into recording, as you mentioned, the heat maps, the visitor recording yeah. sessions, in terms of to to see everything play out in action. But the first thing they did was run a form analysis. And let me just quickly go through, go on the platform and share uh, what type of uh, <coughs> what type of insight form analysis provide you. Like here, here is a is a result of a form which which we ran, uh, and we don't want to share the analytics of that. So yeah, you just like click quickly go through <laughs> it. Uh, yeah. The kind of uh, information a form analysis provide you is tells you that total time a visitor or your user is spending to fill out the form. And that's break broken down into every feed of right. your form. And like if, if you take this particular example, in, in one of our forms, <clears> we <throat> have a subjective feed, which which takes like close to 20 seconds for a user to fill out. Right. Now, another insight which the form analysis provides you is the interaction time. In terms of when somebody clicks on that field and actually completed it. Right. So there are two types of time that that person there's an impression on that field. And the other is that person has actually clicked, put, put, brought their cursor down to that point and then spend that time. Now, third is the hesitation time. Hesitation time is calculated on the basis of whether <coughs> you start writing something in a field and then you deleted it and you start writing it on again. Like, like this happens a lot when we order a pizza. Right. <laughs> like, like, Whenever we see an offer, a coupon code which provides 30% discount, 50% right. discount, we just like put it, it says it's expired. We go search around <laughs> the web, find another coupon code, put them there and again. And it was actually a very classic case study by Domino's. Yeah. They saw that a lot of their users are doing that through visitor recording. And what they did, they just pre-populated the coupon code there. Yeah. And, and that just saw a tremendous yeah. amount of... Uh, a lot of businesses are doing that exactly, now, having the exactly. coupon codes yeah. right there. So yeah, that's what hesitation time tells you. 
that what are the fields which a user or a visitor taking uh, spending a lot of time on or maybe you know correcting it repeatedly another another outcome of the hesitation time is that folks are taking a lot of time to think about that field, whether they should exactly. provide this exactly. information or not exactly. and in most cases <clears throat> the field which is taking a lot of time to either get filled or a user taking a, a lot of time to put their cursor at that point is your moment of exit right and and you again like if they're thinking so much about something you know as a business is imperative you need to you know, help them get out of their misery exactly. at that point of time so like if if you're looking at this um, you know we would definitely try to fix that exactly. i think yeah. otherwise you will not let me come into my into the office next <laughs> morning <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah another is the refill rate so what it tells you the fields which have been filled more than once so yes. what could be the case is that somebody filled a value they click submit they saw that there is an error thrown on on the first field itself then they refill it again and <clears throat> this metric tells you the amount of time they have refilled it so if it's 10% it means that it takes more than 10% of the users to fill it again repeatedly and that's another another fiction point yes observe right there then there's analytics around the fields which are been ignored now this this could be for two reasons <coughs> one is you're asking something very extra yeah. like why would a company i mean who wants to just log me in for a free maybe you know just subscribe me in for uh, some content would want to know about my maiden name yeah or why would why would a company which is which which is you know predominantly giving you free flyers offers coupon code would want to know about my income right <laughs> exactly yeah, you should be concerned about that yeah that happens yeah so these are the fields if, if you're asking something like completely rational and people are ignoring it people are going off your funnel <clears throat> that's something you should think about in terms of why you need to and if, if it's something which is very critical i think it's important to mention in that in the caption in terms of why would you want to use this information right whether even if it's about personalizing content for them so you can like even mention that we would take this in account in terms of feeding what what suits your interest something like that another field is the drop field and i think these are the fields at are the point a person or a user decides to leave yes. it's like i just cannot make sense or like you know i'm just like done 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 with the form your products are amazing everything it's just that you know your form is that bug me so much that i'm not, like just not motivated enough to like fill it out that's why we mentioned repeatedly that that value should be available you need to be next to clear. the form yeah. that he should remember why he filled out the form why yeah. he needs to fill out a form yeah so these are the all all the insights which a form analytics provides you coming back to our presentation and the and the uh, example which you were taking yeah uh, so you saw the control variant it it is asking a lot there's no easy way to go past it you are forgetting about the value that why you need to fill out all these things so igoma came up with two variations and we're going to be discussing both yeah uh, so the first variation you can see that they got the value there like what the user was trying to purchase there might be a very good offer on those things that's why you know that user was encouraged to come come here and on the left hand side you see that the last name field is gone mm -hmm. just the name now so they improved a notch now in the second variation what they did it they thought that the users are even more lazy to fill out the name and all those details so they also provided them the option to of a single sign on right at the top right now ashwin yes <laughs> i think you pretty much know the answer to that but like what would you think that why they needed why they need to create two variations so i think i think I, which I think, one could have worked better so so let's not worry about which one i yeah, think you can reveal that you know with a drum roll yeah, uh, exactly. in a few minutes but you know there are a couple of things uh, very interesting going on here so as you see on the right hand side uh, you know you've got two items that you've put into the cart 
uh, that they've laid out, you know, uh, right next to the form. So while you're filling out the form, you're looking at what you're, you know, planning to buy. And you're just one step away, you know, fill these three uh, fields and then boom, you you have your two items in, a, you know, uh, ready for delivery. But it's very clever, you know, the friction again in V1 is still high because they are asking for three fields to be filled out. out. And it's not just three fields, you know, maybe there's some sort of validation that happens on email. Uh, maybe, you know, in the next step, they may have to give another piece of information uh, that the business does not know about them. So it, 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 a lot of friction could be developed by having uh, this field in place. So I think what they did in the V2 part aspect, they're like, okay, they've got the value on this side. You know, we are, show, we are motivating them to actually fill this out. Um, but on the friction side of things also, let's take it one step further. Let's give them single sign on and reduce the friction and let's see what happens. Um, so by reducing friction and at the same time, showing them the value and motivating them uh, and you know, showing that value literally right next to the form. Um, I think it's, I, I, I think in my case, or at least if I have to select uh, V2 would obviously, you know, work a lot better, Definitely. but there's a, there, there's reasoning behind that. Uh, if you think about, think about it from the perspective of motivation and friction. So they increase the motivation, reduce the friction, and I think uh, they ended up with great results. And and the most important thing to observe <clears throat> here is that all the variation had the single sign-on option available in them. Right. It's just the about, in, in, like in terms of what is the priority of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's very important in terms of how you prioritize the order of your fields. Right. Like if if we were doing this, um, we would actually like segment it and we could do that within vw where if someone is coming from facebook or you know someone has facebook uh, uh their facebook cookie or id already there in the cookie itself you can actually just show them the facebook button and not worry about the form at all exactly and you know again just hitting on that aspect of showing value maybe even bigger images maybe you know and you can do so many things again if you start playing around uh, with the motivation yeah. aspect and you start reducing the friction it just becomes very interesting and you can come up with a lot of ideas on how you would do that uh, on your form pages. Yeah. And just to tell you guys that the V2, the variation to one, and it outbeated all the other variations by a mere 16% increase in conversion, which is phenomenal. Like, so coming on uh, whether to go directly on terms of whatever outcomes or whatever output or insights you get from your form analysis mm. and you know ship them as easy wins or they have to be a methodological approach in terms of you know figuring this out and maybe, right. maybe you know break it into steps and run experiments around around your form and well what is what is that one thing which you stand out for you so i think uh, as we have written down i think understanding the visitor behavior or the user behavior uh, is critical because these people are you know, in our case, especially they are the buyers. Uh, and in a lot of cases, they are the buyers of the product. Uh, and, you know, when buyers are interacting uh, at that point of time, making sure that the experience is great is very important for the business. To do that, um, you know, we need to really look into the visitor recordings and heat maps of, of this experience and get that right. So I think the starting point, instead of going into the form analysis and looking at the individual fields and what's happening there, I think a great starting point is to look at the visitor recordings and the heat maps of the pages. And I would even, and I've said this before, I would even go two steps before someone reaches that form. Yeah. So if you look at your funnel, go a step before and see what kind of story you're building. So in the in the example that we took, you know, what sort of product pages did we have? Uh, and when they, what kind of value did we show them? And then when they added it to cart, we need to, you know, keep a piece of that on the next page uh, because from a story standpoint, it should not break. So again, understanding and visualizing that customer journey uh, through visitor recordings, through funnels, through heat maps, I think is absolutely important to get this right. Heat map is also a great way. Uh, combination of heat map and form fields that we just saw. I think that is also pretty kind of insane because it gives you two pieces of information. One is 
where someone is getting stuck on the form itself but you also start looking at pieces of the page where they spend the most time on exactly and you'll be surprised how how far those pieces of information are from the form and people are scrolling all over the place they go down they look at something they go back up they forget they're looking for a second piece of information and all of that so it's just it could be a mess from a user experience standpoint so if you're able to visualize that through heat maps and a combination of visitor recordings what pieces of information are they looking at what are the parts that they're getting stuck at on the page or and also on the on the forms that will give you a lot of ideas on how to um, get your forms right we also have uh, surveys and you know you can use exit intent on surveys yeah, so because there are a lot of people who do not interact with forms so when you go into any kind of form analytics tools they'll give you a lot of insights on people who interacted with the forms but what about people who did not uh and if you run a survey on them on why they are exiting yeah and ask something as simple as targeting as, them on their behavior mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. you you if you ask the right question i think you get a lot of uh, a lot of insights out of that yeah so i think if you if you start with these two or three things uh getting the visitor research right and if someone is having an inferior experience asking them why they are having an inferior experience and using that information to get the experience right uh that could you know that could jump start uh your form optimization program uh in the right direction definitely and i think the best way to understand that and you know make it more useful for the users i have a crazy idea yeah <laughs> uh, like let's open the session for the for the for the audience and any any in any of you like you know share one page with us on over chat uh, with a form with, yeah. which has a form and let's let's analyze it yeah Let, let's, let's let's see, have a look let's see uh, we can what, actually have a discussion exactly. around that let's have a comprehensive <clears throat> conversation around it uh, so guys uh, just send out any any of your landing page any of your website form uh, if you need feedback for that like we we just going to discuss it right away so so yeah so what we can do is actually you know what we can do while people are uh, sharing their forms or looking for that or looking for those online we, if you want we can even pick one website at random and get started with that really you want to do that yeah sure like uh, uh and while uh, while people share their forms yeah so i am into coffee uh, okay. like and i recently <laughs> built this habit of having cold brew Okay. And uh, we in marketing we even have a, you know like a cold brew uh, community and where we you know try to chip in with with one idea of in terms of how we can build a, use a cold brew in maybe a mocktail or a cocktail. Okay. And we're like having that party every Friday. You're very posh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, and I want really want to take an example of this website called Sleepy Owl. Okay. And they have an amazing interface. Uh, and let's let just quickly see how, how they have done things. Sure. And guys, yeah, feel free uh, to send out, send across your forms. I, I think we have a couple of entries already, but yeah, feel free to share your forms, and we'll pick at least two uh, before the session ends. <clears throat> Yeah, so this is how the website looks. Pretty neat, like I love the interface and everything. Yeah, so what's interesting is that you know, cold brew, for example, someone like me, I'm not as passionate about cold brew, uh, but having that visualization in place on exactly. the landing page itself, it's very enticing. It's very enticing. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued, at least. But what's interesting, there's no uh, CTA. Yeah, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, this has just like a simple CTA, like try the brew. And that's the page, how, how you get things started for them. And you see like very neat. If you're trying it for the first time, you know what value it offers to you. They have made it sure that, you know, right at the time you're adding it to the cart, you know that it's super simple to make cold brew. Uh, what is the value you get? So again, I think let's break down from the framework uh, that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So what is the, you know, motivation for someone to buy a cold brew? So I think it's also, as you said, you know, you you have a social culture around it. Yeah. So you know, you know, it gives you some sort of social capital also that you know, Sleepy Owl, uh, you know, it's a it's a cool 
uh, cold coffee brew uh, yeah. in India. It's an Indian brand. Uh, so if, if you can just go back. So, um, so having those the brand uh, right at the center of the images that are being shown, I think that is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the brand is right there. And, and then it's very vibrant. Like, exactly. And brew is something that you feel like, you know, this it's very hard to make. I have to keep it overnight yeah, and stuff like that. It's a lot of effort. And but they have actually, you know, laid out the steps of that friction. You know, like that it's extremely easy. So you just put your cold brew, add water, keep overnight. Uh each pack makes three cups, and then you have the enticing packs right at the on the right side. Yeah. And even the checkout <clears throat> experience, I just want to like discuss it briefly. Like it's pretty simple. Like you just yeah. So they have like a super simple product line. They have just like tea cold brew. That's it. Right. They might have multiple flavors. I've never tried. Uh, but yeah, this is this is what I have. And like just the quantities and check out. That's right. It. But if you go back again, sorry, I'm. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, I, 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 I like it, where you're coming from. Like. So now you know it talks about you know five brew packs, which is great, and it's given me a price point. Um, but at the bottom, you see like a tiny little line. It says first time here, read our reviews. It's interesting, you know, like I feel like if we were doing that, it should be able to realize that we are first time buyers of the product. And if you had shown me a couple of, you know, those kind of experiences that you just shared with me right now, that made us go to this website. If that word of mouth excitement was there and some pieces yeah. of that was here. Yeah. Um, and almost also kind of giving me an insight into the community hmm. because as you said it, yeah. because of the brand so it's, it's got a community feel to that so although i'm able to relate to the to the brand from a coffee standpoint that community aspect if that come out from reviews and couple of images there that would have been interesting here uh, but what they have done is they've kept the form very simple hmm. uh, i would improve upon the motivation aspect yeah. especially for someone like me who's not you know who doesn't understand the cool the cool aspect of this brand so getting so getting that getting that right uh, exciting me to you know order my first brew uh, and you know getting that experience right so those would be my suggestion for this one but it's a it's a, it's a page uh, that is nicely done yeah, yeah it's well made okay All coming right. back to the presentation and see if, if there's some users who have asked us a question yeah i see one coming from emily uh, let's, let's try that. And Emily has a question as well. We are currently about to run a split test on the Angelian form page with some very drastic changes. Would be keen to get your feedback. All right, okay, Emily. Let's let. Uh, split it. test is the right choice of experiment if you are running drastic changes. So that's great. You heard it from the expert. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of things happening. Angelian. Okay. Get a price. Price for six months. So I feel like uh, so it'll be great if you can go to the website again. Like let's analyze from an experience standpoint. So let's say let's see if we can go to the homepage and see you know what is the story like. All right. Yeah. So it's a so website windows. which sells windows doors, pretty much everything for home. In terms of entrance and exit. All right. For people and fresh air. <laughs> All right. So improving the homes from Britain over 50 years. Okay. Pretty neat website. Love, All right. Love, love how they showcase the horseshoe book. So you can actually, you know, select a product and get that installed and everything taken care of by uh, the Anglian home. Yeah, I think that's what I understood yeah. from this. And it, uh, obviously focus toward uh, door and windows. Um, so if you go above the fold one more time. So I'm just uh, trying to get hang of yeah. the So this, um, this would be my first feedback, you know, that um, the windows and the doors aspect uh, was not clear f right from the get-go. Exactly. I felt like there was an offer on windows and doors because that's the first piece of information you see here, uh, but it's around discount. Um, so it felt like, you know, it's it's... There are a lot of things that you are selling, uh, but I feel like there's a focus there on particular products that yeah, did not come they through. They have a niche, yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, that would be my first feedback. Now, let, now that we understand uh, the first step of the story, let's go to the second uh, step. <clears throat> so, obviously, so someone I feel like here 
um, you know, is so again, I, I'm trying to, from a user standpoint, I feel like someone is looking to get something done uh, and they come here and be like, okay, I need to get a code or get a price and see, you know, what they can offer me. Uh, so one thing that you've done uh, really well here is that um, when you're getting such a big thing done at your house, and I actually recently renovated my house. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, it's again, the trust factor is huge. Uh, you're, you know, it's your home uh, and you don't want bad windows or horrible doors, uh, you know, and someone doing a bad job uh, there. So having the trust pilot rating there um, and creating that trust factor, I think that's pretty cool. As far as the form is concerned, address of your project, again, you really need to ask, is that the most important thing uh, that we need to ask the user right away? Yeah. Right away? yeah, that's something because you were, again, what are you optimizing for? You want to get the user's phone number. Uh, you want to ask them what they're looking for. Uh, if they select windows or conservatories or actually it'll be great if we select one, if we can select windows, let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, so I think, yeah, so if I'm looking at Windows, you you know, it's kind of unpacking. So first you get my phone number, I select Windows, but you're not, you know, you, you have an input from me, but can you show me a couple of examples of Windows that you have done if mm -hmm. I select that yeah. on the right hand side, you know, some kind of interaction, like 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 maybe even reviews or something like that, uh, just to kind of, you know, create that, you know, exciting moment because I'm excited to customize my house. Uh, and if you make it a bit personal based on the choices that I've made within this form, that could be very interesting. Like the moment I hit windows or, 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 or any of the other tabs, I have an impression of what kind of job exactly would be, would be uh, happening at my place. What would be the finish, you know, and all the other things which you offer. Uh, because what I understand by address of project is, is the delivery you, you, you'll send it or. So again, like, uh, you know, I obviously understand address of your project is important to kind of understand the feasibility of uh, what could be done and if you have uh, people in the area to do the job or not. But you could ask that on, over a phone call. Uh, so that that would be something that at least a suggestion that I would have. And you actually have a phone number right uh, uh, at the bottom, which is maybe in some cases a much quicker way to get in touch. Uh, so maybe even getting the phone number uh, above the phone and somewhere near uh, the form. So I would say, you know, shorten the form, increase the motivation when someone selects, let's say windows or whatever, uh, give them the option to call straight away or let them schedule a call, uh, with the person, uh, and, you know, build on that excitement and, uh, give them a couple of options to really get in touch with you as quickly as possible. I think that's what I would optimize. Yeah, another for. interesting thing, which I just noticed was that this form is a two-step form. Like if you, if you see it here, Oh yeah. yeah, I didn't notice so that. So let, let's check out that as well. Yeah, sure. And like I have my address filled in. It's uh, just that I'm not at your location. That's why I'm showing a lot of error. Uh, not sure how will this work out. Uh, I don't think, can we type 000 maybe? <laughs> oh. Yeah. You're cool. a genius. <laughs> <laughs> you need more zeros there maybe. No. Is it a mandatory feed? I feel like there's a validation going on there. Yeah. No. All right. Uh, it's okay. Like, uh, I think, yeah, we don't have the information to go to this second step, but yeah, that would be our kind of insights on that form. Yeah. But a few things which I liked about the form is there's a way to still connect this review uh 7.2 on trust radius with a feedback yeah which is nice so here you know again sorry to go back but you know i would love to see the visitor recordings and see you know what parts of this page people are interacting um uh people are interacting with uh and you know bringing that information as close to the form as possible so if people are interested in the story if people are interested uh in the reviews uh if people are interested in understanding why anglian uh, if you could have whatever information you think is critical for someone to make, to give away their phone number or give away uh, their address, uh, have that information near or around the form. Again, looking at it from a motivation standpoint, what can you, what information can you put out there near the form that I can actually motivate them 
to fill it out and reduce the friction at the same point at the same time yeah 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 i think i think that feedback where we mentioned about uh, if if there could be a small image or a visual of what kind of product we are selecting yeah maybe even start off with the product you know like what are you looking to get done windows yeah. and then you know we do excited you know yeah. these are a couple of the projects that we have done in windows and these are the ratings and then you ask for a phone number yeah and, or you give away your phone number and stuff like that and instead maybe. of just saying select products you can make it more like conversation like yeah. like as you just mentioned that you know what are trying to you know buy or maybe what is, what is that something you want for your house yeah just to make them feel more comfortable and yeah. personalize that you know that so again all of these things things could be tested out yeah and i definitely. think that is key so if you have so what we are doing here right now is ideas the idea thing so if we were doing this you know i would say utkarsh great ideas but put it in the plan layer and put a prioritization number on it and what and, you're expecting out of it. it and let's test it out and i think that is really important and what you're doing is great you know you're running a split test so what you'll have is one version that is doing better than the other but it's important that you keep on optimizing you keep on testing playing around with the page and making those you know uh, a chain of long tail wins on this form that would be important so yeah do, do we have more forms yeah yeah we have uh, this another one coming from andy <clears throat> okay so i see it's a request a callback form could yeah. you critique you have the question yeah me? sure could yeah. you critique this page Okay, we will try our best, Andy. All right, let's see. All right. So it's uh, Aldemar. Aldemar. Okay. Whether your experience, okay. So it's a real estate business, from yeah. what I understand. Yeah. Commercial mortgages. Request a call back. So they have like sections laid down, and I like this part. Like even the sections, they are mentioned <coughs> explicitly that they these are optional. It's very interesting. I'm just uh, trying to imagine. um someone who is you know in need of this uh service mm-hmm. so whether you are experienced investor or first time buyer or looking for a property for your business okay so someone is definitely looking to buy no renting or anything like that i think um getting again um i think i may be repeating myself here but some similarities uh, what the business does uh you know having some sort of uh clear indication of that near the brand itself uh, that could be very helpful because right now i have to read uh, the small print um, so that is pretty cool one thing i really like is that uh, if you go above the fold again request a call back there's a number or email us it's pretty yeah, straightforward exactly uh, then there's a second option so if you don't want to call us uh, request a call back but when you're requesting a call back you're asking for a lot of information yeah. and in my head um what i'm thinking is you know if i co- if i would have called you in you would have asked all of this all of information these, anyways yeah anyway so um should there just be a link to just schedule a call instead of asking all of this information yeah and maybe you know couple of things that you need to personalize so you definitely need the phone number you definitely need the uh, need the name um but other fields may maybe you know a bit of an overkill but maybe you're trying to automate and uh, so yeah i think that's a conversation yeah so one thing that which i, I feel uh, like to have would be that you know maybe if you you guys have the uh, different verticals of sales teams like we guys have inside sales team enterprise sales team and all all sort of things and you break it down in terms of the um, type of lead which is reaching out to you say let's say there's a startup place who recently is got a funding and would want to expand so their expansion would be so if they would like five folks 10 folks would want to expand to maybe 50 55 right. and off the bat like right. that's that's the expansion plan if you're already a company you know in the fortune 500 or somewhere and you know you have like you want to rent out the entire building or you want to buy an entire building space so there maybe there would be a different sales sales team who will be handling so the only information you need on the page to request a call back would be 
the name of the concerned person yeah. where they should call and, and me- what is the type of exactly. the requirement maybe even ask you said you know if you're an experienced investor first time buyer looking for a property for your business i think those are the kind of personas that you're targeting mm-hmm. why not just ask that you know again these are just suggestions um but you know asking that what are you looking to do you know are you looking to buy your first house and again you know creating some delight there and personalizing the form there and you know you can really uh personalize the form there you know first time buyers can you talk about their experiences here do you yeah. have a couple of testimonials yeah. about first time buyers who are excited you know to buy their house from you and maybe even put your face there you know like because again a real estate dealing it's a lot of money uh requires a personal relationship and maybe putting a face out there or having that personal you know almost like a human interaction element to the form would be pretty cool um so yeah those would be my suggestions also uh, like asking for the net profit annual i'm not sure if that's something most businesses want to you know publicly tell or maybe you know discuss that with a business again so these these are confidential conversations sometimes and are worth to give away these information over a call which are which is like very you need to create some kind exactly. of rapport over yeah. a call to yeah. like get this information at least that's what what we are hypothesizing um so yeah build that trust first and then go for the information and you feel like you need to automate uh maybe um you know you go for the persona first and when then someone calls in yeah uh, you can automate certain parts of the information based on the persona itself so if a first time buyer is calling you or you are scheduling a call call with the first time buyer have very specific questions for them on the call that could even be automated you know like yeah also instead of asking them to pick a date i think it would be better to ask them to pick a time yeah. because date and time uh, yeah so if if they're if they're uh, t- willing to take the pain of filling out the form and request a call back uh, my main first thing actually was to get a call back instantly because like yeah. like i'm 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 in, in desperate need of <laughs> of, of, a, of a place to start my yeah. business or to uh, <clears throat> to scale it but picking a time is important because maybe right like right away or 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 in a half an hour from now i have another meeting so right. maybe that's not the best time to reach out right. to me so knowing that what is the best time to reach out to them uh, is is another field which i think that is 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 more critical than picking a date because if if somebody is taking the pain of filling out a form i think the expectation need to get a call right away so any what is important is not like i i think ideas are you will have a million ideas yeah. from a lot of people but the i think the basic framework you should really focus on so you need to motivate the user to get in touch with you and make them excited uh you need to you know get those kind of delight moments into the form page itself whatever information you think is important for them to get excited about calling you or you know they cannot wait whatever that whatever you think that is by talking to your customers uh by doing visitor research i think get that in, get that delight factor in uh into the form itself and then things that you feel uh you know our friction points or you know people are spending a lot of time on and that you could do through the form form field analysis within bwo you know take that out if it's not useful or if you could get on a call and uh, ask them you know m- may not be a great idea to you know create friction so reduce friction uh, increase motivation um, i think again focusing on that would be great and you'll come up with a lot of ideas that yeah, you could another test. thing uh, i just quickly want to touch upon is like even if there are few section which are optional it's still giving me that impression that you know it's it's, important. it's, it's, it's yeah. too long yeah, 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 yeah it's it's just too long and you know maybe i mean i don't know uh, maybe i just go window shopping for a place instead of you know just asking somebody to take do that job for me because that's still be more virtual and, but, you know, but we need to be, but one thing that is again what you have done really well above the pole you know i would have come in and i knew what you did i would just call that yeah, number exactly. i would not worry yeah. about so, the form so i still think and i this i my assumption would be you were getting a lot more calls than uh, form completions yeah. I, I, uh, it would be pretty interesting to know the conversion rate of this page uh, in terms of people who are actually taking the pain of filling out the form yeah uh, any is there is there any any um, so we have actually a question do we yeah, we will click tag at the end of session let's like okay let's, all right all right let's uh, yeah it's so exciting job <laughs> which we have at hand uh, you know Yeah. yeah this excites us a lot yeah. we're kind of nerds you know that perspective <laughs>
Yeah. yeah. So quickly uh, wrap up the session. I think uh, we have been repeatedly talking about this that you need to align your visitor research, the form analysis, which is the research for your form, I, with the heat maps, the recordings, the goals and funnels, leveraging them in terms of who, who are converting, who are not converting. And of course, even just talking to customers. Yeah, the survey, so, the survey, survey bit which you yeah. talked about, that you can put it on exit intent on, uh, on, on web pages which has a form and understand that why they are not filling out the form. Yeah. What is the fiction point? Another thing I think we have put it on here is the trust which we need to build or in terms of what what value we are passing out right at the moment when somebody is filling out the form. So they should know that why they need to take out the pain or have. If, if you're making them go through the trouble, they should know exactly. why they're they going should, through that exactly. trouble very, exactly. very clearly. And the last bit of it is to optimize the entire customer journey and not, not just, just the form. Form is it's a, a part, small part. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a small it, it part. is. It is the last step before the outcome. Let's optimize for the exactly. entire journey, not just that last step. Exactly. You'll get much more out of your uh, form optimization strategy if you do so. Yeah. With that, uh, we conclude the session, yeah. uh, and we open the session for Q and A uh, for all the folks who have questions for us. We'll be happy to answer them. I already see a question, and this one is from <coughs> Ashley. Uh, how do you feel about three-step forms? One that asks for some fields to be completed on one screen. Click next, ask for more fields. Click next, ask for more fields. It's very, you know, it's, that's something that actually I've also been struggling with, uh, you know, within VW and something, you know, I've given a lot of thought about. Again, what is the first step? If you are scaring the customer away with asking for a lot of information on the first step, and then asking for even more information on the second step, it, it becomes uh, tricky. So what you need to do is, again, value on the first page, why they should give you first piece of information. Then if you go on the second step, you really need to personalize that second step based on the information you got on the first step. That is absolutely important to get multi-step forms right. And then once you have that second step information, the third step should provide even more delight. Uh, and, you know, again, going back to the same thing, you know, motivate them to actually finish the form. Uh, so you can go for three step. Three step is great because you can make people focus on uh, on the form one part at a time. Uh, but make sure for each of the screen, you have a very clear takeaway, very clear motivation. And then the next step is very clearly or very uh, intricately tied into the uh, the previous step. So if you get those things right, I think uh, it's not a bad idea to actually have three-step forms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think as we discussed about the idea of you know how we guys did it, like we break it down the first step as only email, and then the second step was within the app, yeah. which basically gave the user an idea of becoming a VW user already right. by just offering their email address. So that delight moment, that moment when you basically level up yeah somebody's expectation or you know give them that pass on that value immediately that yeah. you're already within vw next step is to basically provide us b and c and just get started yeah. and b and c is very contextual in terms of your goals yeah. your pain points what do you want to optimize for and things yeah. like that where you're trying to understand more about them and how you can contribute yes all right do we have more questions yeah yes okay. we have uh, okay and I think we are running short of time as well. Like it's been over an hour, we run, but just let's take this one. Uh, uh, we have Davron asking a question uh, who's asking for checkout form, what do you think is the optimal number of steps? So, you know, uh, Davron, optimal number of steps is highly, highly personalized to your business. Exactly. Uh, and actually, we, while we were researching for this, we also came across a HubSpot study I don't know if you have the slide or not, but I'll give you the gist of it. Yeah. It's like, you know, the number of form fields that you have, uh, irrespective of the number of form fields you have, it does not have a very high correlation with the mm. success of the form. Exactly. I'll tell you why. Because it needs to be personalized to the customer journey that is there for that product. So on your checkout form, uh, and it's similar to the kind of example we took uh, in this uh, presentation, 
are you getting you know getting the customer journey right and are you asking for the right information if you're asking for information that irritates or frustrates your user don't do that um, and you know use form fields use visitor uh, recordings to actually see what is going on and come up with at least five ideas that you would like to you know kind of fix uh, and build an optimization uh, kind of a repository of ideas that you could prioritize and test i think that is very important there's no uh, magic number that i could give you yeah. but what i could tell you is that if you think about it in the right direction if you look at the evidence that you have within vw if you talk to your customers through surveys or directly talk to them i think they'll give you so many insights you just need to prioritize and test it out so testing it out and looking for ideas that are backed by data uh, these are the two key important things that you need to get your checkout forms right yeah and another thing which i want to emphasize was on was that first of all you need to know that what are the right information to ask in the first place because it's like talking to a stranger right yeah. like you cannot ask them that you know, are you a cat person or a, or a dog person like you need to ask you build, build some rapport yeah. first yeah and then ask personal questions to them yeah. so and you could use use do that by understanding the user behavior exactly. so you can customize your checkout form based on the kind of products that they put into the cart uh that could be you know something you know pretty awesome and it's all right if you only have three fields and you would still want to go for a three step form asking one field at a time and offering value on the basis of each response you get at any at every step or asking all the three fields at one step yeah so it's all about how how you've been created about the yeah, entire experience but don't feel free to if you if you want you can feel free to share your uh, checkout forms with us over email and we yeah. can uh, send we'll definitely take back yeah, definitely you know, yeah. send across our ideas and what you could do from a vista research standpoint and ideas that we may have from the top of our heads yeah. all right i think that's a wrap all right awesome that was a great session yeah uh, thanks guys for attending it uh thank you ashwin for Thanks. you know just bearing up me <laughs> I'm, i'm excited to do these sessions and i think we should make them more interactive yeah uh i think that works out really well yeah. Yeah. thank you guys all right thank uh, thank you guys if you have any more questions you can email us if you want any more info feedback on on your forms we are yeah. here we are here to help even if you have any problem in terms of setting up those goals and goals and funnels we are talking about in terms of how you can link them to a form field and then see insights coming <coughs> kicking in and you know gen uh, which will be easier for you to filter down on the recordings of whether uh, whether a user is converting or not converting and what are the pain points or friction areas they're seeing we'll be more than happy to do that yeah just reach out to, just, reach out to us for any help exactly uh, that you need to get your form optimization strategy in place uh we would love to be there all right thank you guys all right take care okay bye bye